You're a good man, Charlie Brown. That was the name of the Broadway play. But this was the great man. This was the greatest man, your father. Tell, if you can briefly, the travails of his life, the challenges of his life, and what he taught you with a third grade education. You know how to make a man cry, don't you? Um, I have difficulty talking about my father without getting extremely emotional because he was a giant. He had the greatest advice when he lost his job after the Second World War as being a foreman in the Kearney shipyards. He walked the streets for eight months and then he became my school's janitor at $50 a week, six days a week. Your school's janitor? The school's janitor. He stayed there until I completed the ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade, wow. until I went to college. Wow. <clears throat> and he would tell me, no matter how good you think you got it, no matter how good you are at the top of your game, always remember you're a half a step from the street. He called you chief, didn't he? Yes, he did. Chief. He called me chief, and I called him chief. Mm. And with his death, I was stunned because for three days, that funeral parlor was full. And my mother kept saying to me, who are all of these people? <laughs> and it was true. He was like the Pied Piper. Everybody would tell their story to Jolly Brown. He had an amazing way of capturing your thoughts, capturing you as a friend. He was a good person, and he was solid. Now, as an athlete, playing football, basketball, and baseball in high school, baseball and basketball in college, he was demanding because he knew that's this was how we were going to get out and I was going to be able to move on and excellence excellence was pounded into me and by that I mean never shortchanging a coach never shortchanging your teammates always the team was bigger than the individual. One of the things that I saw today in a roundabout, kind of like a circle press conference, we were all sitting there listening to you. There was a far off look in your eyes as if you were the only person who was really in touch with the moment of what it was like to see your dad and mom lose everything. I saw the look on your face and you can remember the pain today like it was all those years ago. Can you articulate it? I never, my father never made a hundred dollars a week. We lived in a little railroad car departments. When you travel on a railroad from New York to Newark to Washington, our apartments were right up against those railroad tracks. Wow. Those trains put you to sleep at night. The heat only went for two rooms, the last three rooms, the heat never reached. But you know what? I never wanted to grow up any other way. See? Because everything you did, you earned. One day, we decided to go up into the downtown area. There were five of us. We went into Woolworths. And we picked off a few things that we should not have picked off. <laughs> My father came home at 5.30. I'll never forget this. He said, what's that? I said, it's a pencil shop. Where'd you get it? I said, 
I got a wart. He said, how much it cost? I forget this. I said, two cents. And he said, where'd you get the money? Wow. And he knew that I had stolen that pencil shop. He grabbed me. He got my jacket, put it on, down the back stairs, down the street, all the way to Woolworths. I'm playing the whole time. He was crushing me into Woolworths. He took me right to that counter. He took out that pencil shot and gave it to that woman. He gave her two cents. The most humiliating day in my entire life. Never stole again. I was my man. The lessons I got from him were the best. Never cheat an employer. Never cheat a player. Never cheat a coach out there listening to me on a clinic. Never cheat that fan who's listening to the television. Try to educate them and give them your heart every day.